All right, so we are live. Hi, guys. It's Claris, and I am just going to give you guys a couple of moments to trickle in. I'm seeing there's one person there. Um, happy Sunday. I'm just going to make sure my YouTube is on and I am able to see your comments and such. Hi, Madeline. Okay, so it's May and uh, we have officially begun the Hello Clarice G watercolor challenge. And it's just been like a whirlwind of activities. Uh, hi, Patty. I'm actually so floored by the amount of interaction that's happening in the uh, Hello Clarice G challenge group. I'm blown away. I love it. I love the positive energy. I love how you guys just continuously encouraging one another and just like chatting like you guys are old friends, like having coffee and yeah, coffee chit chatter. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but um, amazing. I'm loving it. I'm loving the energy. In fact, I'm finding like my phone constantly dinging and I have to keep on checking to see what's happening but like no one seems to need me which is amazing i love the interaction and that you guys are just kind of going with the flow and having fun uh hi melissa hi carol hi cindy oh almost done challenge one good for you can't wait to see what you post in the group hi liana yeah so um i'm excited for the challenge uh and i just wanted to quickly reiterate um if you miss the challenge now because right now what's happening is the videos are not they're hosted on youtube but they're not available unless you have signed up and you get the link so wait till it's done because then you can always sign up again or if you're fine with just joining in the challenge midway absolutely just like sign up on the website i've listed the website i'm not sure if it's in the description here but you can absolutely sign up it's watercolor.clarisgomes.ca and uh, you should be getting the emails every Saturday, Tuesday, and Thursday, and then Sundays are regular live. So um, yeah, so that's that's. I just wanted to sort of say that. So once this is done at the end of May, which is May thirtieth, um, then it'll be something that you can kind of start anytime if you wish. If you missed it, if you're coming midway, whatever. Uh, let me see who else is here. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Zanette. Hi, Shweta. Hi, Kanchan. Hi, Seely. Hey, Christine. Um, okay, so, uh, oh, Shweta's from India. Shweta, I'm so sorry for what's happening going on in India. Like, it's, it's absolutely terrible. I'm just glad to know that, like, most of my family is doing well, but a lot of people I know, like, second and third like degree separation uh are not doing very well so my heart goes out to you guys uh for those who don't know i am originally from india i moved to canada when i was 15 so um strong indian roots here and uh when i get mad at my kids i get a crazy indian accent happening you probably hear it during my um during my painting sessions as well so yeah praying for india and Hoping everything goes well soon. Uh, yes, Patty, you've messaged me a couple of times about India, so thank you so much. Um, okay, so guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over my screen so you can see what we have today. I am excited to sort of talk about how we're just going to relax, have a relaxing session, and just do some nice loose floral paintings painting one painting you can absolutely go out and do this video again and uh have it um practice again if you wish to let me just deactivate this and then i am going to transition into my screen down here so you can see this give me one second to do one more thing so you can maybe see my face We'll see. And then I will read your comments again. And then we can start. There you go. You guys can see me. Okay. All right. 
So is everything clear? Are you able to clearly see? I think you are. So I'm just going to make sure the wire is not in the way. And uh, hi, Denise. Thanks, Cindy. Hi, DD. All right. So this right here was challenge number one that we did for the Hello Clarice challenge that started yesterday. And I thought this was a great way to just swatch and get the colors. So we're kind of going to use this to see what colors we're going to use today. So I have this really colorful palette in mind and I'm going to tell you what colors I've been using for this. So it's going to be quite a bit of colors. So just bear with me. But again, like I always say, if you do not wish to use these colors, please feel free to use any of the colors that you gravitate towards or that you like. Um, so I'm going to be using um, the Matter Lake Red, which is right there. Definitely using the Carmen. Carmen Matter Lake Red. I'm going to use the Violet Cobalt Blue. Uh, this is the raw sienna, greenish, yellowish green, green, and then I'm just going to keep yellow ochre handy. So I, oh, and then last but not least, Titan red. So quite a bit of colors here. So we're going to be using all these colors today and, uh, hope you guys are excited. Okay. And then for brushes, we're going to be using the Princeton number eight, the Da Vinci number one, and the Silver Black Velvet number four. I have two things, uh, two bowls of water ready, one to sort of wash the dirty brush and then one to just kind of do it once over just to make sure colors are fine. I have my paper towel ready and another piece handy on the side in case I need extra dabbing. And then I have my palette, my resin palette by Lisi Arts. And we are good to begin. So now I'm going to switch this paper to my etcher. So I'm, I'm going to be using etcher for this. Uh, Sundays, I've told you guys, I switch from my Canson to etcher because Sundays is a little bit special. So hi, Jill. Welcome. Thank you. Really appreciate all your prayers and thoughts, guys. All right. Switching over to etcher. And uh, then we can begin. So I actually did the invitations from last Sunday and they're ready. I'm just going to, I haven't had the time because the challenge has consumed me completely. But when I do have a chance, I will show you guys how these invitations turned out and get your commentary on it. Okay, so I think we are ready to begin. Oh, before I begin, one more thing. It is May. It is my month. Uh, let's not forget my 20 before 30 goal, which is 20,000 subscribers on YouTube before May 30th. So hope you guys are out there pushing, not maybe not the challenge, but maybe videos or something. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's my spiel on that. Now we can start. Okay, so I just want to look at the comments really quickly before I resume. Um, Christine's excited for different colors. You should be. Um, Gina has 36 of them. Uh, Jill, I've been noticing you pushing me on your friends on Instagram. It is so cute. I love it. But I was like, oh my gosh, she's asking people to follow me. It's really cute. Okay. So I'm going to start now. Enough of the chit chat. Okay. So you can see my view. I'm going to make sure I've moved my sheet over properly. Move my brush holder out of the way a little bit so you can see my colors. And then my water is probably going to be slightly out of range here. So bear with me because I want to maximize on the space for, I'm going to turn on the light as well, I think. So let me see if this lighting kind of helps just brighten up a little bit because it's a little bit overcast today. So not a lot of natural light going on. Uh, and I think it's better to show to show my palette more than this water 
move it and switch it over so you guys can see everything I'm doing without being compromised for the actual stuff. All right, so we're ready to begin. So I think the first thing I want to do is find out what sort of orientation I want my painting to be in. So this, this Sunday's painting, I think I will make it vertical. And so I'm just going to have to move everything all over again. So I'm moving colors. So I'm going to make it vertical. And this way you can see. Perfect. This might actually work out better than the last setup. Okay. Then we have my brushes here to the side and we are ready to begin. Um, window image of yourself. Okay. How's this now? Uh, you know what? Thanks for reminding me, Melissa. Sometimes, uh, I forget that I have a little image of myself there, which I should probably move over to the other side. So give me one second. Let me just move that over to the bottom because I don't need to be at the top. I can just be at the bottom and hopefully, or the top right, let's do that. I think this will be better. And then, because there's a lot of like empty space over here and this way you guys can see what's going on right in this area. And one second before we begin good okay perfect so now we can begin okay so i think the first thing i want to do is i'm going to use my i'm going to use my um mop brush to get water just make sure that my paper towel is here beside me and i am going to use the titan red when I get a little bit of the Titan Red, it's got, when, when you use this muted, meaning like with more water, less color, it's got this really pretty like orange hue, almost like a peach. And uh, I've never used this color enough because I, I don't know why, I always gravitate to the Matter Lake or the uh, Carmen. So we're going to start off with doing this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this color that I have mixed. And I'm going to create, this is going to be the biggest bloom that I have happening here. So I'm going to create a floral that's right on this end right here. Because so I think we'll have like a couple of florals here and then like going tall, almost like an L shape, but like flipped over. So I'm going to start this bloom over here and I'm going to start by doing the petals first, but we're pressing down on the full brush to get like the full color from the brush onto our paper. And so remember the consistency is more water, less color. So we're starting off this way and just kind of fluffing the edges so we get some nice full petals and then kind of just pushing all the color down to the bottom. And then we're gonna continue making, leaving white space between each petal. We're gonna continue making these little petals as we kind of go around and pushing all the color off to the side, oh, sorry, to the center. And then we're going back this way over here on this end too, getting some more color. And then I'm just gonna continue going all around. Again, uh, get more color if you need it, mix more if you need some, and just keep on going all the way around. Leave a lot of white space because I really, really can't stress enough how much white space helps when you're doing loose style of painting. And now once we have this, I'm just going to get a little bit more of the darker hue and I'm just going to add a couple of dots directly onto like certain areas at the tips of these petals. And maybe even pushing some down to the center. And then once it dries, it will give us a nice gradient kind of look, All right? I'm just kind of dabbing it here and there. And then what I want to do is using the same brush, I'm going to take more color from the, uh, from the cake itself. And I want to do some more intense looking petals in the center. Oh, I thought I read muted and I thought I was muted. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just 
pressing down this darker hue that I have and I'm creating like darker petals, I guess you could say, just in the center and just like the same thing that we did for the outer petals, just in a more smaller capacity. And it's like the perfect amount of dried and wet at this point because it's seeping into the orange that we have, which is nice. And then what I want to do is take my number four and I'm going to get a little bit of the metallic red. And I'm just like mixing it directly on the cake from the cake itself. And I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of dabs, kind of like shadowing, shadowing this area for the petals. So we get some nice blending of that metallic red with this Titan, what was it? What was it again? Titan red, yes. And I'm just kind of going around and fluffing some of these areas to kind of make it look like this red's in the edges, in the shadowy areas. And maybe also in some of the top areas of this. So it looks like a full floral with hints of these colors mixed in. So this consistency is a darker red, meaning more color, less water. That's what I need. And then I'm just going to make some of this a little more prominent in the center. And then we're going to let this bit dry before we go back and do anything else to it. So washing off my brush, I'm going to just put that down for now. And this, I believe, had, what color did this have? This had the orange, yes. The Titan red, I mean to be specifically correct. So I'm mixing that color on here since like whatever is left over on the, um, on my number one mop brush. And now we're gonna do another floral, but we're gonna mix a little bit of this uh, Carmen, very little bit, mixing it with that Titan Red over here, just to get like a slightly different hue. And now we're going to try and do something that almost looks like a side, very loose floral, uh, like a hibiscus maybe. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to do, I'm going to press this down, pull it all the way down. Still looks very much orangey to me. So I clearly didn't get enough of the red pinky stuff. So I'm just getting the number four and adding some of it on here. And then I'm just going to use the same brush, the number four itself, and just create a couple of very loose petals, making sure I have that pink in there. So there's one petal, here's another. And then I'm going to do one off on this side, leaving white space, guys. Remember the white space? And then I've left this kind of middle section area for the center bit that stands out. Remind me of the sta stamen, I think. That's what it's called. Am I pronouncing it correct? Mixing a little bit more of that color on here just so I get it right. And then doing the last petal. So there we go. And now at this point, I think what I'm going to do is using the number four, I'm just going to get a little bit more of that pink. And I know it's quite damp still, but I want to go and add a couple of like linear lines to kind of give it that more detailed look. Okay, so it's still very damp in that area. Do you know how it has some of that linear detailing to the petals sometimes. So again, it's a very loose painting, guys, so don't stress about, oh my gosh, it doesn't look like a proper flower. Just have fun with the colors and let them mix around. Um, 
So we'll leave that one to dry a little bit before we can go in and add the center. And now we're going to move on to creating, I'm washing off the color. We're going to move on to using the Carmen. I'm going to mix some of the Carmen on here. And I want to create some tinier looking florals. For this one, you know what? We're going to use the number eight, Princeton. So I'm going to put this brush aside and get the number eight, Princeton. And these flowers are going to look like small, like a small cluster of regular five petaled flowers that we're creating. So let's do them happening over right on this end here. So just off to the side. So I'm just kind of doing these cute little petals, leaving white space, trying to make them as small as possible because they're going to be like a cluster of them. And then if you like that whole feature of adding an additional color, just kind of go in with the number four and just add in the damp areas some of the color and that'll give it a nice like additional, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? Dimension? instead of it just looking flat. Yeah, so there's one. Uh, or next one we're gonna do is right here. So this one we're gonna try and make it looking extremely loose and almost like facing upward. Uh, and then a couple of petals just up in the air, kind of maybe in the background. So again, notice the amount of white space I'm leaving Notice I'm not making it like a full flower. I'm just kind of using this main front flower to kind of take shape and then using the back as a background that adds some additional shape to our little cluster. Okay, so I'm going to maybe even add some of that orange in here just to kind of see what happens. And then creating a couple of more loose looking petals here and then maybe even one over here at the bottom. And then just giving this one some shadow by adding that darker color just at the bottom of it so it doesn't blend in with the top floral that we have. Oh, I love it. Someone just said that they're watching this while spring cleaning. Oh, it's Alia. I didn't know that was a thing, watching, uh, watching watercolor videos during other activities. Blows my mind every time someone tells me they're doing that. All right, this is too dark, so I'm just kind of smoothing it out. Sometimes stuff like that will happen. Just don't sweat the small stuff. Just kind of try and move past it. And just adding a couple of like little fluffy details off to the side so it looks nice and soft or loose before we move on. Okay, so we've done that. Now the next thing I want to do is add um, add some florals that are more of the violet. So we're going to mix a little bit of the violet. I say stick with the same um, stick with the same brush, number four. Was I using number eight previously? I can't remember because I think I fluctuated between the two. So I'm going to take the number four and get some of the violet and we're going to mix that over here on this end. Getting some clean water to kind of mix this about. And then we're going to create these florals again in a very similar nature. And they're supposed to mimic like a hydrangea looking floral. And we're going to mix in some of the cobalt blue in the centers mixed in with some of the, just to get that two-tone hue happening. All right, so then we're gonna create this one happening kind of on, like almost as if it's leaning over. So remember the hydrangea florals are similar to what we did there, just on a smaller scale. So I'm doing them Mixing in a little bit of the Carmen as well. And then just kind of 
carrying on with creating these loose looking petals all around. So same strategy, like do your main floral and then you can have these other petals peeking out from the back. I'll do another floral right here, like a full looking one maybe if I can have enough space. I don't really have enough space. Uh, and because I want it to be round-ish, so I'm just kind of trying to give it that shape. Lots of white space. Doesn't have to look like you can absolutely tell where the pe um, where the little tiny florals are, just as long as it looks pretty and the colors are looking on point. So you can, and it has that shape. The shape is important. So adding a couple of loose petals here, leaving your white space. And then once this is done, we've laid down all our colors. What I want to do is go in with the cobalt blue. So taking some of the cobalt blue, I'm going to add this into the center of these or the bottom of the petals because I think there's only two flowers here with the center. So we're just going to add them to the bottom of the petals in hopes that they kind of mix in and go up the petal. And this will act as a almost like a shadow or like a gradient. So now I'm getting some of the um, violet and I'm going to add that on top of the blues that we've just done. And maybe even a couple, like you can do a loose, a couple of loose petals if your shape isn't as per your liking, as to your liking. And then, yeah, just like do a couple of like little dots around, keeping up with that loose look and style. This dried up, so I'm just going to move that color around so it's dried up nicely. So it blends in nicely. All right, so that's done. So there we go. That's the very loose looking hydrangea style floral. So next thing I want to do is do um, a couple of more flowers over here, but like on a smaller scale and something that kind of contrasts with this big flower that we have going on here. So we're going to take, we're going to use the A mixture of uh, actually let's start off by using just the matter lake red first actually and a very very muted version of it so what I want to do is create something that maybe looks like a rose but it's like loose for lack of a better word <laughs> I'm dipping the tip of this into the orange just to get like a slight variation we're gonna start off by doing a, a rose that faces this way and we are going to start the center and you guys know how to do the center it's like doing c strokes so i'm doing c strokes okay this is too orange get more of that red in there c strokes you guys can see it right yeah perfect and then i'm going to take my num actually no not number eight the mop and I am going to just go ahead and squish this around with just water on it. And I'm leaving a lot of white space. And I want like that highlight where some areas are dark and then others are just really light or white. And that's like a good contrast with what we have happening at the top there. So I'm gonna move some of that color around if you wish. There we go, that's our loose uh, rose that's happening over there at the bottom. And then the next thing I wanna do is add some of, um, let's do some flowers that kind of look like daisies, Berbera daisies. And so for that, in the beginning, I am going to use, oops, I didn't wipe off my brushes. Uh, I'm going to use 
a mixture of the ochre and some of this Titan red, I think. So, but before that, we're going to do the center. And for the center, I'm using the raw sienna. So I'm going to get some of that nice raw sienna going on on my paintbrush. And I will start off by doing the flower, maybe in between this big floral and the rose. So just doing a couple of linear lines in a oval circular shape. And then just dipping the tip of my brush in water because I want a little more dampness happening here. Very, very loose, very, has some white space happening. Uh, and then here's my yellow ochre. I'm mixing some of that over here onto the side. And then I'm going to get some of the orangey color that we have, mix it with the yellow ochre. And then we're going to do some very loose strokes. So I'm using the number four itself, and I'm just going to do a couple of strokes. Some of them can be very light. Leave some white space in between, and you'll see why. Because now we're kind of going to go in and get some of the darker orangey hue, mix more of that with the yellow ochre, and get a stronger consistency with the color, and add that. Maybe even get some of the color that you've already pre-mixed onto your palette. And just allow the colors to blend in. So you can even highlight some of them if you want them to be darker. But I think that's good enough for now, so we'll leave that. Uh, let's do another one. Let's do another one happening on this side here. And that's mainly because I think I like how much contrast this brown is giving us. So I think I want a little more contrast happening instead of just like an influx of nice bright colors, which is never a bad thing. So I'm just going to do one off to the side here. And this can be like half. You can just see half of it maybe. So I'm dabbing all that brown, washing it off nicely, and then I'm going to get uh, the yellow ochre first and just... This can even look like... Are Black Eyed Susans yellow or is it only pink? I'm not sure, but it could be a floral of that sort too if you want because I know they have like the darker centers and I wasn't hoping or wasn't thinking that it would go all the way to the edge but here we are we have this painting going all the way to the edge and that's okay it's fine sometimes it is what it is you just kind of go with the flow and you get the best results that way sometimes um, okay, so we've done two of those. We've done one of these. Um, I think we can do a couple of these looser looking ones here at the bottom, and then we can go on and do our, uh, leaves and such. So what did I use? I used the Carmen for the ones at the top. I think I can use a light version of the Carmen for the bottom. And I'm going to make it very, very light, or try to make it very, very light, and maybe even add a hint of purple in it, give it like a slightly different hue so it all doesn't look very, very pink. Yeah, a little bit of that purple, a little bit of the Carmen, okay. And let's do a floral right here, and I'm hoping that it's going to be very, very light, so I've mentioned that a few times to you guys. Okay, so let's make it like a very loose-looking rose, 
And so for that, we're just going to do the center. So this can be like looking upwards. So I'm, I'm starting off with the with the actual petals first, and I'm doing the center a little bit after the petals. So you can see this happening. And then as I'm kind of continuing and adding more petals, I'm just getting more water, <clears throat> more water from my cup. And then I am doing almost like a frill around this floral. And I'm trying to go from light to dark so that it doesn't look too um, bright compared to everything else that we have going on. There we go. And I think that's good enough. We'll just allow that to dry a little bit. Actually, before we allow it to dry, I'm going to take a little bit of the purple, mix it a little more with what we have here. Because I want a slightly darker hue just in the center. And then maybe like just in a couple of the edges here. So it pops some more. And then I think that's good enough. I don't think there's a huge difference between the uh, Princeton 8 and the Silver Black Velvet 8. It's just nice to have a lot of 8s handy because I tend to use them a lot. I don't have many 6s, so the 8s are what I kind of default to. Okay, so I think this is good. Now we can kind of go ahead and start doing the uh, the leaves. So let's let's do the leaves. So for the leaves, I kind of really like the combination of the actual yellowish green with green, and then uh, sometimes combining it with the is it set? raw sienna as well. So we'll probably be doing a couple of those kind of mixing and matching lightly. So I'm going to get some of that yellowish green, some of the green, and then, oh, one thing I, I forgot to mention, Cindy, um, the, the silver black velvet eights are way better than the Princeton in terms of like blush, ugh, brush flexibility and such. So if you are planning, I can't remember what you said. If you're planning to get a silver black velvet, the velvet eight, um, you should consider it because it's, I don't know if you own any of the other ones, but they're quite nice. And they are my second favorite after the, um, the mop by Da Vinci. All right. So let's do some, uh, some leaves. So I'm going to first attach it to this hydrangea looking floral that we have happening here. So let's do a stem. And I've mixed some green, but I, you, you're going to find me getting some green directly from the, from the cake as well. So I'm going to do a leaf right here. I'm going to have that stem happening there and then pressing down. I'm drawing in or painting in this loose looking leaf right there. Okay. So there's our first setup. Just do another one here. And now at this point, feel free to kind of go ahead and add some greenery in the other areas as well. So I'm going to try and do some fun looking ones. Like we want to try and get different, different shapes. So don't just do the round oval looking leaves. Do some thin ones, tiny, like shape sizing is also a huge important thing. So I'll do a couple of them that kind of just like over on this side or fall over on this side rather. And getting some water onto my brush, I'm gonna do these. These seem to be so nice. I love doing these little tiny ones. 
just feel like they add so much to a painting in general. These are what I gravitate towards doing. This style, that is. So we've done one there. I'm going to do another one happening over here on this side. Like, when you do a certain style of leaf, try and get it done all at once. And then you can kind of move on to the others instead of mixing water and then going back to it over and over again to the color. Mixing color, not water. That's what I was meaning. There we go. Got another one there. Um, let's do one happening over here. This one can just be like a portion of it. And then at this point, I'm going to add a little bit of the raw sienna to some of my green and get like a slightly different hue of green happening. Um, and then let's do a couple of leaves happening. Over here. And then I'm going to do some over here. So I'm just going to try and frame these flowers as best as I can with the greens um, so that they stand out some more as opposed to just looking like one big blend of color. And the green is where it really helps give it some framing and definition. Adding some of the darker hue to the stems so that they don't look like they just blend in. Just mixing more color. Maybe add in a little bit of that lighter green. And now we can add some, let's do one like peeking out from the rose right here. Perfect. Another one right beside it. Uh, I'm going to be doing some in this in the middle of the florals as well, just so again they have a little bit of um, green in there too. So let's do let's do a couple of them happening over here on this end. And remember to give it different sizing, different shapes for the leaves, uh, different coloring uh, consistency. So you can do some dark, some light. Normally what you would do is you would do your lighter leaves first and your darkest leaves will be like a highlight at the very end. Um, but I'm just loosely vocalizing what you would do when you're composing because you need all of this to kind of really make your composition pop. And yeah, so this is where we said we were going to put the center of this flower. So I'm going to kind of leave that open and just add a couple of stems over here on this end of it and just move my hand over so I can paint better. And let's just keep, um, give this one here like a very thin sinewy kind of almost like a wildflower leaf so it's like a nice delicate addition to the rest that we have going on and we'll have another one happening over here so it looks like it is coming out from the florals so again the thick and thins in the leaves also really add some nice um, detail to the compositions. So when you're always wondering about what to do, think about all of these aspects to it. So again, I'm literally just like drawing a line, adding some tiny leaves, like watch me do like this little stem here with two tiny leaves. 
and then like maybe just doing some more protruding over here. And if you want to reference some images of wildflowers or whatnot, absolutely do that. That'll totally help you in figuring out what you want to do where. So keep that in mind as well. Um, so we've done some there. Let's, I'm going to do some over here too. Again, very delicate, very light, no real precision in the shapes and whatnot. And we've got some, let's do some over here, like just maybe coming out on this end. Just like that. I'm just getting some of the darker brown that I have and just adding it to the stem there. And just now I'm just kind of fluffing up the area by adding some light looking leaves around. So like for instance, these guys are darker. If you want to kind of just add a couple of light lighter looking leaves, just to fluff up the area and give it more green, just dilute the green that you have and go ahead and add these guys all over. So notice the different shape sizes that I have for these guys, like two big ones in the middle, maybe like a tiny guy. And then maybe just even like a, a plain simple stroke. And that brings things alive because then you have a hierarchy of different sizing and loose detail without being too specific. Um, we don't have any over on this end, so I'm just going to do a couple here. And Maybe even some over on this end here. And again, feel free to like add water to your strokes if you don't want it to be too dark or too prominent. And that's one way of smoothening it out and giving it less dominance in your painting. And I'm just kind of adding loose looking stems in the background because I know they're not going to stand out as much as the main ones. But again, we're kind of adding detail without adding detail, if that makes any sense. I'm just fluffing up and boosting up the whole painting. Right. Okay. Good. So I think this is good. Um, just reading comments. If anyone has anything to say. Okay. No one has any questions. Uh, Tanshan actually asked, is this a four size? I think it is. I always get confused. Yes. A four. Size of the paper is A4, yes. Okay, so for the center of this flower, this is not going to be correct, but I'm going to do it anyways because it's my painting and I can do what I want. <laughs> so we don't have a white or the yellow. We don't have enough white space, but I do want the center of it to stand out. So I'm actually going to be using just the orange that I have. So love me or hate me, I'm going ahead and I'm doing it. So I'll have it protruding out this way, and then I'll have the little dotted areas to be red. That looks very weird, but that's okay. 
maybe even like smoothing out the center by adding a little bit of orange detail to it so it doesn't look so random. And I'm just adding that to make it look like it looks like a gradient, but it's failing right now because we don't have it damp, but that's okay because I think once the end, once it's done, I'm smoothing it out with water, by the way, so it kind of isn't very prominent, but you can see that hint of orange. That's good enough. Uh, where's my red? My Matter Lake red, and I'm going to do the little dots for it. And and then just adding the remaining red to the center. That's it. Just gonna leave that. Um, yes, I go rogue. I know. I do what I want, guys. I do what I want. <laughs> Just kidding. No, but I do. All right. So I think that's it. Um, I do want to do a little more detailing for this main floral here. And what I really, really liked was the brown. So I think I'm gonna add some brown to the center of this, and then just a little bit of detail for the red. Adding, going in with some red. So I'm getting the raw sienna, and I'm just going to add a couple of dabs of the brown to the center. And I kind of like how the how it's like a nice contrast against all the color that we have happening. Maybe even darken some of these browns here just a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like that contrast. And now I'll just go in with the Matter Lake Red and I will just add a little bit of like detail um to the petals you can see how like the color is just kind of blending in with the background petals so i just want to give it a little more definition so i'm just going to add a couple of like c strokes to make this pop a bit and it might work it might not work let's see So I'm just getting some water on my brush and then fluctuating between the water and the color from my palette. I'm just kind of going and just shadowing this area with the red. Just smoothing out some of the areas that look too hard edged. And then maybe towards the end, instead of doing with the red, I'm just going to go with the orange. Just try and see what that looks like. Good enough. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I think 
we can stop here. I might add a little bit of details later on with just adding some leaves and whatnot, but um, I think this is I think this has given you guys a good enough idea of what to do and how to do and just kind of run with it. So I hope you guys had fun. I'm just going to read the comments again to see if anyone had any questions. Um, Okay, Faye's wondering what three brushes. Faye, if you look at the description of this video, I have listed the brushes that I am using. It is the Silver Black Velvet 4, Princeton number no. 8, and Da Vinci number no. 1 mop brush. Um, yes, Melissa says, I like my paintings better when I look at them. Look at them two to three days later. So true. Sometimes even the next morning, I'll just look at it and go, I don't like this. And then I'll come back in the morning and I'll go, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. <laughs> it's funny. Sometimes you just need a break. Sleep on it, like they like to say, right? Uh, Zanette, yes, you absolutely should try it. Um, Gina, you're welcome. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Tina. Um, okay, I think that's it. So I don't want to hold you guys up too much. It's 2.57. I think we're on time. Uh, Andy, if you wait for the replay, I have mentioned all the colors I'm using. So just kind of rewind to the beginning. And I have listed the colors. I've listed my paper. I've listed everything. And if you're wondering of the brand of everything I'm using, it's in the description again. All right, so that's it, guys. I just wanted to end off by saying hope you guys enjoyed the session. If you have, please give this a like. Uh, consider subscribing if you're new to my channel or new watching me right now. And um, send me your artwork. Tag me in your artwork. If you've done this, please take a picture, post it on Instagram or Facebook. Tag me. My handle on Instagram is hello Clarice G. Don't forget the G. And um, yeah, let me know how you make out with it. I'd love to see it and um, interact with you guys. So again, have a fabulous, fabulous Sunday. And we will chat soon. I'm just going to look at the comments one more time to make sure no one has asked me anything before I say goodbye officially. All right, you're welcome. All right, great. No, one's, no one has anything. All right, guys. Happy Sunday. Bye.